Well, hi, and welcome to Two Wheels Better from Silkaline Oils in Belper, Derbyshire. Bit of a strange background, not very motorcycling, but we're going to go through the labs, we're going to talk to a few people, look at a few engines and show you what it's all about. So, John, what is so special about motorcycle oils? Well, in the old times, oil was a fairly basic material, um, didn't last very long. Uh, people were used to changing oil pretty rapidly. Uh, also, they were used to engines that didn't last very long either. But over the years, the engines developed, became more advanced, and of course, the oil was developed along with it. And it was enhanced chemically in various ways. Later, synthetics were used. And the idea of this was to reduce wear in the engine, to uh, keep carbon particles in suspension so you don't get sludges or blocked filters and also to make the oil behave in the cold so you get a good cold start and at the same time behave when it's very hot as well. Uh, consequently the engines as they've advanced the oil has advanced with it and I think people fail to realise that even a fairly basic oil is quite an advanced product really. Now a lot of what you said applies to car engines and bike engines oh, yeah. but I remember when I was a lad 2050 oils um, I used to use in my bike engine it just didn't seem a problem mm. but now that is not the thing to do. Oils for motorcycles are particularly specialised aren't they? Yes that's true. Uh, the problem is particularly over fairly recent years the motorcycles diverged a lot from the car. The cars become uh, very reliable, the oil is fill and forget. Uh, the motorcycle the power They're still reliable, aren't they, oh, bikes? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, the motorcycles become very, very powerful. The brake horsepower per litre is very high. Um, unusual thing for these days is they run the oil in the gearbox, so it puts a lot of shear and stress into the oil. So it is really helpful to use a superior quality oil in a motorcycle. Well, looking round here, look round your lab, you've got all sorts of interesting kit which I want you to show me, but uh, what's this one we're in front of at the moment? Well, this is a nice, easy thing to remember. It's an atomic absorption spectrophotometer. And what does it do? Ooh. <laughs> it sprays oil into a flame, and the flame excites any molecules that might be in there. Well, it looks pretty exciting to me, isn't it? Oh, yes. In this particular case, we're looking for calcium in the oil, which is a detergent, part of a detergent additive. And you can see it as a, a red colour in the flame. Yeah. But what's actually happening is, is that the lamp is emitting characteristic calcium light like here. The detector is picking up any calcium that appears in the flame, and you can detect just a few parts per million. Um, it's used regularly as a quality control test on all our oils, motorcycle and otherwise that contain calcium-based detergents. These are the things that wash the carbon deposits out of the ring grooves, valve stems, and disperse it in the oil as a black particles, uh, which are totally harmless. The, the oil might look, look black, but it's not doing any harm. And this is because of a detergent additive, which is measured on this device here. Viscosity is a, an interesting thing. How do you measure viscosity? Can we have a look at that? Oh, yes, well, we've got some kit downstairs if you'd like to come with me. OK then, John, we're at the little uh, testing machine here. What does this one actually do? Well, this tests oils at very low temperatures. Everyone's heard of 10W20, 20, 10W40 oil, 20W50. The W stands for winter, so in there we're generating a, a localised winter temperature, if you like, of minus 10 degrees. Hence degrees. the frost on the that's top. Right, that's yeah. why it's got some frost on the top. Um, if it passes this test, which we do by turning the rotor on, Letting it, let, letting the rotor spin. That's just a paddle in there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's a, just uh, turning inside the very cold oil sample. Yeah. Um, if it passes the test, we can then say it's 20W, right. which is the the temperature at which, which is the specification yes. level for minus 10 degrees C. Right, and you simply get that from the amount of current taken, and then you've got a little chart or whatever. Yeah, and that's you, you right. Work yeah, out. you can yeah. work it back from that. Oh, okay, so that's cold temperature. What do we do then for the hot temperature? You, you put a, a flame underneath it, oh, do you? Not quite. No, no, that's a bit too extreme. Uh, 100 degrees centigrade is the hot temperature, and we've got some equipment over here if you'd like to come and have a look at it. OK. Well, when John brought me to this freezer, I thought we were going to have an ice cream, but that's not the case, is it? Oh, well, later, maybe. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what have we got here, then? Well, before we go into the subject of viscosity, I thought just to emphasise this business about cold temperatures and oils. 
This is what happens if you call an old-fashioned monograde. Yeah. Really got that wrong myself. Yeah. An old-fashioned monograde oil down, such as would have been around in the 1950s. Where that's when they were sort of straight 40s. Yeah, that's right, water, straight right? 40s. That is a straight 40, actually. Yeah. Uh, so you can just imagine trying to start an engine in that in a freezing cold day. And you're not having me on, are you? That, no. that isn't sort of painted in there, oh, no, that no, is it, for real. Honest, yeah. It, it will start to move if God, you keep it in your, your hot yeah. little hand for a while. No wonder engines were difficult to start. Now this is a modern 1050 multigrade, also down at the same temperature, minus 20 degrees. Yeah. It's pretty thick, but uh, the engine would survive right. starting in that. Yeah. A couple of other interesting things. This is a um, synthetic base oil of the sort that's used in aircraft engines and in better quality motorcycle oils. And there's a mineral oil. Good grief. <laughs> And, the and that's not the dripping, is it? The interesting thing is, is there's the two just at ordinary room temperatures, exactly the same two oils there. Yeah. Good grief. Very graphic. But if you get, if you cool them down. Yeah. So that's one of the advantages yeah. of mo modern synthetic yeah. oil. It's fluid at low temperatures. And what's the one on the very end? That's another motorcycle multigrade, 1550. It looks like a silk lane to me, that pink colour. <laughs> You oh, what a coincidence, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me, when so, you talk so, about base oil, yeah. what do you mean by that? I mean, because that doesn't look like oil to me, it looks like water. Oh, well, it's because it's a, a synthetic chemical, really. Yeah. Um, the sort that have been used in aircraft engines for many years, it's the sort of things that allows a, an F-16 to start up straight away in Alaska, shall yeah. we say. They use the same sort of thing. But there is quite a high proportion of that in this. All oh, right. It's... Uh, very beneficial, particularly to motorcycle engines, because apart from assisting the low temperature performance, they're also very good at high temperatures and uh, have some useful load carrying effects on highly stressed surfaces, such as gears and camshafts. And, and me. And what's this weird looking contraption we've got here? Well, this is another method of measuring viscosity. We've looked at low temperature viscosity. Well, this is high temperature viscosity. It's a bath of oil at exactly 100 degrees centigrade, which is a typical sump temperature on a motorway or if you're getting a move on you know yeah uh, so we take a sample of oil and run it through these special glass tubes it's necessary to time the oil through that fine glass capillary there it's almost like an egg timer principle yeah, then, yeah is that's it? right yeah it just allows the oil to fall down under gravity at exactly 100 degrees and the rate at which it travels through this narrow glass tube gives you a figure the actual units are called centistokes um, and all the SAE numbers, which are not W, are assessed in this sort of apparatus. So in other words, if it's SAE 20, 30, 40, 50, or even 60, which does exist, it'll have a specification at this temperature. So for example, SAE 50 is, from memory, 16.3 to 21.9 centistokes. So if we have an SAE 50 oil in here, it should give an answer of about 18 units. All right, so what do you actually do? You fill up that tube then, do you? Yeah, that's the idea. Draw the oil up. Oh, the you draw, draw it up from the bottom, yeah. Into, into the, into yeah. The vacuum, into the top okay. Section. I got it, yeah. And as it passes the top mark, start a stopwatch. Yeah. And as it passes the bottom mark, stop the stopwatch. And from the time, you can work out the viscosity. Right, your little wear machine here. I must say I don't recognise any of these bits from, uh, from my bike, John. What, what have we got here? Well, this is a simple wear test machine that uh, looks at the load carrying ability of oil. Um, it rotates a Timkin roller, roller race there, which spins around like that, picks up a film of oil, and then it traps the film of oil between the rotating uh, bearing race there and a, a steel billet. And, and is that ordinary steel? Is this it just is ordinary steel? steel. The idea is just so that all the wear occurs on one component, right. and it generates a, either a wear scar or it sees as the thing solid. Uh -huh. um, it's interesting that uh, very often high performance oils intended for cars don't give a particularly good result on this. Um, although, on the other hand, wear machines have to be treated with caution. Uh, they must relate to what really happens in the engine and you can they can be misleading under some circumstances right. so that little billet you, f you fix that into your jig so you can keep changing these can't you for oh, yeah, different oils yeah, that's right yeah. yeah and what oil are we going to test here then? well there's just a sample of a um, very high quality 5w40 car engine oil 
Ooh, what happened there then, John? Well, that, that was a seizure. As you probably guessed. That happened very quick. W were you expecting that to happen so quick? Well, yeah. Um, because, I've tested, I like because, the way <laughs> because I've tested the oil before, you see. Yeah, yeah. All right. yeah. This is actually quite a moderate load and um, a high quality oil with the right sort of synthetic content intended for motorcycle use would stand that load very easily. Would it? Oh, yeah. A similar test on an oil that's, shall we say, more designed for the job of carrying a lot of load would show... You've got a few that you've done earlier by the looks. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, this yeah. is it. This is uh, the one I did earlier. Yeah. Uh, show a much smoother scar, and that's actually run for two minutes. The way I normally run these tests is run them at lo a load that will stand yeah. for two minutes and then measure the scar area, and you, get, you can work your w way back to what's called the film strength. In other words, there's a film of oil sitting there yeah. between that scar area and the rotating bit which is supporting the load you see which is the strength of the oil film. So that must have lasted all of two seconds. Yeah that's right. But yeah. again that's a fully certificated well, good quality it's oil. Yeah, very good quality yeah. And, uh, and, and our motoring it's, it's, viewers it's, needn't worry. You no know, it's very adequate for the job it's intended it's, it's, to do. Yeah. yeah. Now that's your wear test one mm. and then you've got another little machine behind us which is the friction one yeah? Yeah that's so, right. Can yeah. we see, see what you do with that one? Oh yeah. This is your friction machine. It looks like a sort of a crank con rod and what could be a piston. But what's the difference between the friction machine and the wear machine that we've just seen then? Well, um, friction is energy that's lost as two surfaces rub together and you can minimise this a number of ways. You can reduce the viscosity of the oil. On the other hand, that's dangerous because you could get in a situation where there's more wear, so uh, you have to be careful what you're doing. Well, there's various chemical ways of doing it. And it's really minimising the amounts of energy that is lost around the energy, just around the engine. Sorry, just due to surfaces rubbing together. Well, that certainly looks very thin oil in there. What's that you're on, you've got under test now? Well, that is actually um, a shock absorber oil or a, a suspension fluid. Right. Uh, as you can see, it's moving fairly slowly yeah. at the moment. We can run it much faster. We've developed um, motorcycle suspension fluids on this, and we look at friction reduction and reduction in stick slip so as to give a really smooth action. And, and again, the old weights That's hanging right. off the old yes, spring? And, yeah, and in this case it's a cast iron plate at the bottom there and a, a pin-shaped test piece which you lower into position. Yeah. Oh, I see that the pen's just started yeah. off recording. And of course, if there's any friction, it comes out this way and yeah. it's measured by a transducer here. Ah, right, OK. Measuring against this arm. No, it's peaked up on the chart. And so, how fast will this go? Will this get up to 14,000? No, it actually gets up to 400. You have is to it? stand back. It's only, do so it's only doing 100, 98 at the moment. Yeah. So the oil starts uh, splashing around a bit. Oh, it does, yeah. yeah. In actual fact, it's got a modification of my own here. I read up the relevant chapter in Phil Irving on tuning for speed. And, uh, <laughs> did uh, you? Oh, yeah, seriously. Yeah. yeah, and you put and, a counterbalance and, and, and on and there. There's a counterbalance on there yeah. because. Uh, it is just like a, a Manx Nort oh. engine, really, isn't yeah. it? And uh, the vibration was pretty awful. It started to walk across the oh, lab. So you this see. is a special John Rowland tuned tester. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's very good.